Hello, my name is George, and I am here to teach you a little bit about Puerto Rican culture, specifically a type of music that is over 400 years old that was brought over to the island of Puerto Rico by the slave trade. Now, the slaves brought with them their knowledge. They couldn't bring anything else. By that, I mean, you know, the, the, the way they cooked, the way they, 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 uh, they played music. And one of the rhythms or one of the music genres in Puerto Rico, which is, again, about 400 years old, was called bomba. Now, the bomba was played on these types of drums. These are not. These are not conga drums. These are called barriles. Barriles because they come or they're made from barrels, uh, wine barrels or rum barrels that uh, that the slaves used to uh, used to take from their slave masters and chop them down, make them smaller, and turn it into a drum. And they put a, a goat skin on it. And back then they used pegs. Today we use hooks. Back then they used pegs and they put fire underneath it and the fire would actually tighten the skin and that would give it the pitch, either high or low. These drums, like most drums are, uh, they're played in, in different, uh, different notes. So you have a higher drum and a lower drum. One of these drums, the higher drum, is called the talking drum in English. Of course, in Spanish, they call it el subidor, or el primo, meaning the first. The first meaning the higher of the two drums. This drum is used to mark the steps of the women or the men that are going to be dancing, uh, doing these rhythms. Uh, along with the drums, of course, there's an instrument, two instruments here. Uh, one of them is called a maraca. This is actually a gourd. This gourd was made in Puerto Rico. And uh, it's one of the instruments that the natives, the Tainos, the American Indians used to use for their ceremonies. They would take these gourds, they would open them up, make, put a hole on each side, clean it out, let it dry, and put seeds inside and then put a stick through it, and it's a shaker. So this was used a lot in, uh, in, the, in the Indian culture, uh, the Tainos, you know, the Arawaks, the Caribs, and of course the Native Americans. Uh, this other instrument here is one of the more recent ones, and it was invented because they used to take two sticks while playing this rhythm, and bang on the side of the drum. So instead of having somebody hitting the side of the drum, they decided why don't we make a cylindrical type of instrument of, made out of wood and use it to play this rhythm. It's called a qua, C-U-A, qua. And what it plays on here is the same thing that's played on here, except it's just you're just gonna hear a ticking sound. Like this. Okay, so that rhythm, along with the maraca, the shaker, and the drums, comprises of this genre called bomba, or bomba puertorriqueña, to be exact. Okay, so a lot of other islands in the Caribbean also play these drums, bomba drums. Martinique. Uh, uh, I think Belize does it, the Haitians do it, uh, and they're similar. They make similar, similar like drums, but each one, each country has their own rhythms. In Puerto Rico, we have five basic rhythms on the bomba. These five basic rhythms uh, are, the, are the foundation for other rhythms, which there is about 50 of them. But the five basic rhythms, I'm going to demonstrate it for you right now, and each one has a name. These names uh, sound like African names. 
The most common of all the rhythms in Bomba, if you listen to Latin music, Puerto Rican music especially, the Bomba has this one rhythm that is virtually played everywhere. You hear it, you say, that's Bomba. It's called Sika. Sika. And it goes like this. The next one I'm going to play is called Puembe. Again, uh, uh, these rhythms are 400 years old. Okay, this next rhythm um, actually comes from Haiti and it's called Olande, which means Holland, the country of Holland. Uh, and it sounds a lot like what we also call Puerto Rico Plena. And it, it goes like this. rhythm is uh, very, very African. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a, the, the, the three rhythms I play is played in four, four time, musically speaking, in the time of four, four counts. This one is played in a count of three or six, also known as a six, eight rhythm. It's called Juba, Juba, Y-U-B-A, and this is the pattern of, of Juba. Shaker or Maraca. And what this, what this plays is actually the same rhythm as the drum, except it's one sound, as you can hear. But the pattern is the same. Okay. So I showed you four rhythms out of the five. This fifth rhythm is the fastest rhythm that's played on the island. There's a town called Loisa not far from San Juan, in the north, northern part of the island. Loisa is a town where the majority of the slaves would escape to. This, this place was so far out, it was swampland actually. When slaves would run away, they would go to this town, and the slave masters didn't just want to go through the trouble of going through those swamps to get to where they were at, and they left them there. So the town is predominantly black. And uh, today they have one of the fastest rhythms called Seis Corrido. Seis Corrido. And uh, here's how it goes. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Hopefully you learned something. 
Bomba Puerto Riqueña is the genre, and hopefully I can make another video another time with more people so that we can all put it together so that you can get a better understanding. Thank you so much. very fast and the dancers they have to really dance fast okay so back to the dancing part of this now men and women both dance but unlike traditional dancing for us salseros let's say salsa you dance in partners in the bomba it's usually one person at a time the man would take the woman out to the front of the drummer and he him and her would bow down to the guy that's playing the primo. In other words, they're saluting the drum, paying homage to the ancestors, the people that started this 400 years ago. You pay their respects to them. And once you pay their respects, that person will start dancing. As that person is starting to dance these rhythms, the leader, the higher drum, is going to be doing marking the steps. So, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say they're dancing to the Sika. And the dancer starts dancing, and whatever that person does, drops the drum. That's more or less what the dancer is doing. So this guy's marking the steps while the other drum, and by the way, you can have one extra drum or you can have 20 drums. These guys are all going to play the same pattern. This guy, the talking drum, is the highest drum, and it's the one that's going to be directing, or I should say, marking the steps of the dancer. Okay. Um, Having said that, we're going to play this drum one minute so you can hear the sound, the same rhythms, but in a lower tone than this one. So the sika. The cuerbe. The Olande. The Juba. The Seis Corrido. marks the steps. So that's the five basic rhythms. From there, there's many, many other rhythms. Um, one of them is called Oyomula, Oyomula, and it goes like this. Probably one of the easier patterns. Goes like this. Okay. 
There's another one called Quembe de Catano. Quembe de Catano. Like this. There's another one uh, that comes from uh, a, a form of Juba. Okay. Um, if you go on YouTube, you will find many, many uh, of these rhythms, actual dances in, in the bate. The bate is the, uh, the front yard of a house where the slaves would gather in the evenings. Uh, it was usually done in family groups and they would play their drums. And in the bate, the, the man and the woman would, would, would sing and dance, you know, and drink, of course, and celebrate, especially Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And these can turn into huge, huge crowds of uh, 20, 30, 40 uh, drummers and dancers. Um, uh, and of course, you know, when, when, uh, when they were slaves, uh, they used these drums as resistance calls. In other words, when slaves wanted to escape, they would actually play a rhythm and they would let the next town know by whatever they sang that, hey, tonight there's going to be an escape. We need your help to help these people uh, escape. Or maybe even there was, there's a festival next week. So and so is going to get married, and we're going to celebrate. So we want all of you to come, and they would actually play rhythms that let everybody else know that there's a feast coming their way. Um, and of course, there's, there's there's a lot more on this uh, that I know. You know, I mean, I, I I only know so much of it, but there's a lot of books out there that you can look up. Uh, and by the way, when you go on on YouTube, you look up Bomba Puerto Ricanya on YouTube, Bomba Puerto Ricanya. And you're gonna have a whole bunch of uh, videos come up, and you're gonna see uh, uh, a lot of the, the, the festivals in Puerto Rico. There's this one festival uh, which was canceled this year because of COVID, but it was called, or, or, or it is called, Encuentro de Tambores, Encuentro de Tambores, or a reunion of drums. And there are separate towns that are picked in Puerto Rico. And that town will gather a group of bomberos, as they're known, people that play bomba, and they will represent that town in that festival. And from outside Puerto Rico, it's called the diaspora, and that means anybody outside of Puerto Rico uh, will go to this group, uh, to this festival as one group called the diaspora group, uh, and that's people from New York, Chicago, uh, uh, Miami, Orlando, LA, San Francisco, uh, wherever they're at in the United States, uh, they, they get together, they meet in Puerto Rico, they rehearse a couple of days, and they go. And again, it's like 20, 30, 40 drummers playing. So that's really interesting. And again, it, it, this year would have been my first, it got canceled. Hopefully 2021 we will be able to go, and that's, uh, that's really going to be fun. Anyway, 